Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. Bulls back in complete control, V-shaped to all-time highs. I made a big mental error on Friday, so I put myself in timeout. I'll talk about that a little bit. And when I was in timeout, I was able to observe some things on the chart that I was looking at in terms of resets of fear, like we just underwent, and how that impacts growth names and weaker names that have not been benefiting from this bull market as significantly. Let's look at those observations and some charts. So real quick, the mistake that I made on Friday, I was playing Baba Bullish at the open, had a good entry, nice little five minute uptrend. We headed to the high of Thursday. We rejected with a very clear double top, exited all the position, locked in the win. At least I thought I did. Went outside, worked on some flood repair. My dad came to visit two hours early. Distractions. By the time I got back to the computer, settled in and realized I had an open position by accident, it was down 5% from where it was this morning. And that is a lot bigger than I would ever let it get if I were actively managing the trade. So just a mental error with too much going on in life. And I'm putting myself in timeout because of that. I'm not going to trade for the rest of August. I'm going to start trading with a fresh clean slate in September. I'm going to put the desktop that's sitting on my, my kitchen table for the last four months. I'm going to shift and put that to use. I'm going to get used to a new keyboard and just a, a reset and a timeout midway point through the year. And that is where I stand. So looking at SPY, V-shape all-time highs, an observation that I made today, and I was thinking, you know, if you remember these videos back here before this consolidation took place, I was talking about how I'm not comfortable going bullish on things because of the lack of SPY consolidation and because SPY is due for consolidation. And the pullback was very brief, but it's a reset. It's what I'm going to call a fear reset. So a little brief amount of fear, and then it's reset with confidence right behind it. And Friday was a real big win for the bulls because we had the hourly trend change confirm on Friday. Here's Thursday, hourly high, high the bounce, high or low. And then Friday, breaking the high of Thursday was very important. Think of the two different sentiment shifts that could have taken place into the weekend. A failed hourly trend change, and we would have been trading right here on Friday to start this week. The confirmed hourly trend change and close at the high of the bounce set up for this bullish confidence. And again, sentiment at the end of the week last week was, okay, well, that wasn't bad. Solid bounce off the lows. Are we about to test all-time highs again? And here we are. So I call that a fear reset. And it's the kind of thing where, you know, I'm not comfortable going long bullish name or growth names because they are not positioned well at all for broader market consolidation right now. So any, we, any name that had any kind of weakness, not comfortable going bullish, now that we've pulled back, things change. So I was just thinking to myself today, okay, how would that be shown on a chart? That sentiment that I feel when I'm not comfortable entering a weak name bullish, but then as soon as the market pulls back and resets the technicals and has the fear reset, then I'm a lot more comfortable going bullish. I thought, well, I bet when we set our monthly higher lows on growth, it was marked by one of these little fear resets in SPY. So looking at SPY, we can look back at the last four that we've had. We had one here and we bottomed May 12th, May 13th. We had another one where we bottomed June 18th. And we had the last one where we bottomed July 19th. And then of course this one and the results remain to be seen yet, but we're looking at May 12th, June 18th and July 19th. IWM is a good guide for the, the growth names as a whole, there's a lot of correlation there. You could look at ARKK, you could look at PLTR, some of these individual names, TAN, the solar sector. But if we're just gonna look at IWM, so what happened on May 12th? Well, here's May 12th and May 13th. And again, we were dropping before. SPY was at all time highs on May 7th. IWM on May 7th? is weak. We've been pulling back for a week at that point. We then have the fear reset in SPY and we flush down. That marks the low for multiple weeks. So that was May 12th and May 13th. Next one, June 18th, bulls control. There's our, our reset of fear. There's SPY's bottom. And then we bounce for an entire week. Next one, July 19th. Again, we were already weak. SPY flushed for a fear reset and then the bulls had control for two weeks from there. So here's our fourth flush reset. Look at the bounce these first two days. And the question now is, do we get multiple weeks of bounce with this little reset? And again, you could also view it as just 
the snow globe of rotation shaking up. And we're now watching where the flake's going to settle. And the flakes, historically, the last three times we get the fear reset in SPY, that's when we get a shift in momentum towards these previously weaker names. So again, you can do this for any individual name. You can do it for Tesla. Any growth name that we've been talking about, it's very similar to this, this setup. And the best swing trade that I've had this year was the ARC monthly higher low, and it was aligning with the May 12th and 13th bottom. And again, we were up then for an entire month from there. So what does that mean? Well, that means I'm watching growth very, very closely. Now that I've got this new observation, I'm watching IWM and individual growth names for the next two weeks to see how much follow through on this bounce do we get? Do we confirm daily trend changes for that follow through? Because IWM is coming off a low. We held weekly support, which is a good sign. And we have to see once this move tops out, a confirmed daily trend change for us to say, yeah, that marked it again. That marked a significant sentiment shift and a trend change is shifting. So again, biotech sector had some big news today. It's been in the growth sector, but uh, PFI bought out I forget the ticker that it bought out off the top of my head, but that was a catalyst. And again, 118.23 is now a double bottom. Massive move off the low. When was our last low? May 12th and May 13th. There's your June 18th reset. And there's your July 19th reset. Some of them are very short-lived. Three green days, four green days. It's not a lot. We're on two green days. If we get another one tomorrow, growth names are green tomorrow. I'm going to say, yep, same thing. So again, you can look at TAN, all these growth names. Along with those names, I'm watching the weakest of the weak growth, which is the MJ sector. So they're not showing us much strength at all. This is CGC, but I'm watching very closely. Does this mark a sentiment shift? The answer right now is no, but I'm watching the psychedelic sector. CMPS, daily trend change confirmed, increase in bull volume. ATAI, recent IPO psychedelic space, First real daily uptrend in its history. MNMD, daily oversold bounce, 8% green day. Still a lot of proving to do on these names, but I'm watching to see, does this shift trickle all the way down to the weakest names? Along with that, the last time we had a fear reset back in May, we saw the growth name set monthly higher lows. There's other names that are due for monthly higher lows. Penn, six months of consolidation, five months. We're scouting a monthly higher low. Can the pen bulls use this shift, get over 74.87 and start the monthly bounce? Z, Zillow, monthly, five months, six months of consolidation. Can this mark a bigger picture shift for a monthly bounce to take place like it did for most other growth names back in May? And CGC is another one where, again, six months of consolidation. Can that be enough to mark a sentiment shift? The, the short answer is I don't know, but I now have something that I'm watching for. I now have a clear observation. I could, if I wanted to be aggressive, I could establish some trade game plans based around this assumption. We have, of course have to see SPY and QQQ now do their all-time high grind up and keep this strength going. And the big question for me will be, can IWM confirm a daily trend change from here once this initial bounce tops out? Ideally, after another green day tomorrow at the least. Gold, daily bull flag confirmed. Very nice follow through. At this point, we now zoom out and scout weekly resistance of 1834. Anything under 1834 is a weekly lower high. And with everything going on, I have not re-entered a gold position at this point. Obviously would have liked to at this point, but taking a step back. Monthly double bottom, more convincing now with the daily trend change. But we will need a weekly trend change to eventually take shape as well. If we were to reject from 1834, we would be watching for the potential of an inverse head and shoulders to set up on the weekly. Gold has been holding on very well compared to dollar strength over this bull flag. And now the dollar saw weakness. The dollar confirmed a weekly cup and handle, but this is a rising wedge on the daily. And I really like how many very clear rejections and very clear bounces off support we have on this pattern. This is the pattern for the dollar. And anything above 92.47 is a daily high or low. We can certainly stay in an uptrend for a while longer. But if you are a gold bull, you really want that pattern to break bare to try and propel, continue, 
continue propelling off that monthly double bottom. Silver is still weaker than gold. It's still trying to set up a daily trend change. Gold is the metal bull to be watching for now. So that's all I'm talking about here in the short term. Baba. We got the Baba move. So I was a day too early. It would have been nice to make that mistake today and come back to a larger profit day than I thought I would have. But it's a volume climax. Took a little while for the bulls to prove it. The bears had complete control through the morning. Two minute falling wedge was the first thing that stood out to me. A two minute falling wedge on something as beat up as Baba. You know, if I'm looking for a two minute falling wedge on an hourly back burner bounce, I'm real confident. If I'm looking for a two minute falling wedge on a name that is absolutely smashed, I'm less confident. But that did mark the bottom. And Jason's uploading a trade review because I was live streaming and pointing that out, not trading it, but he was trading this falling wedge. And then from there, it was a 15 minute trend change confirmed at the same time as a five minute trend change. And the most notable shift for me on Baba was after watching Friday, every little bounce attempt rejecting from a lower high resistance with bears keeping complete short-term control. And what I mean by that is a top of the bounce at 159.59. We double top at 159.59, drop to a new low of the day. 159.30, unable to break it by 13 cents, unable to break that by two cents, just consistent lower highs by pennies, complete control. And the biggest shift for me today was on the five minute time frame when the bulls did it for the first time. And they did it with this five minute higher low hold. They were, they had a five minute uptrend gained and they were on the verge of losing that five minute uptrend very shortly after it formed. We held support by two pennies. That is bulls intentionally holding that technical level to keep the bounce momentum going. We then ended the day with a little bit of an hourly bull flag. Would not be surprised at all to see a gap up open tomorrow. And then we zoom out and scout a daily lower high to be the result of a daily bounce. But definitely looking like a volume climax here for the daily oversold bounce to get going. Watch for the narrative of Chinese names to shift on CNBC and in media. Now the big money has their bull positions. That's the way the game's played. I appreciate you watching. Do good things. See you tomorrow. So over that hill is a big pond and the pond overflows and links up with this part of the creek on the other side and then it just rushes over the road and it ate apart this driveway here, big divots, pushed all the gravel into here and then there's a pipe underneath the driveway that connects the water that comes into here to the big creek and that all filled with gravel and was completely blocked. So then all that water goes through these woods, which is straight towards the house. And the driveway is slanted down this way. So as the water comes over, it's all forced into the woods. So game plan, I think I'm starting from scratch. This is 20 years old at this point. You can see the wood on the side here is rotting out. So I think I'm gonna have them come here and smash this all up, put a bigger diameter pipe because the one that's there is still filled with rocks. We've been digging at it for a long time and it's still full. Uh, so new pipe. And then build up this side to shift the tilt of the driveway so it's tilting this way. So the water runs off into the main creek and ideally avoids the house. So that's the game plan. Got to call the contractor and deal with all that. And then of course we got cables that are going under here. But... I'll see what they say.